El Paso, from Spanish, the pass, is a city in and the county seat of El Paso County, Texas, United States, in the far western part of the state. The 2018 population estimate for the city from the U.S. Census was 682,669. Its Metropolitan Statistical Area MSA, covers all of El Paso and Hudspeth counties in Texas, and has a population of 840,758. El Paso stands on the Rio Grande across the Mexico United States border from Ciudad Juarez, the most populous city in the Mexican state of Chihuahua with 1.4 million people. Las Cruces, in the neighboring U.S. state of New Mexico, has a population of 215,579. On the U.S. side, El Paso metropolitan area forms part of the larger El Paso-Las Cruces CSA, with a population of 1,060,397. Bi-nationally, these three cities form a combined international metropolitan area sometimes referred to as the Paso del Norte or the Borderplex. The region of 2.5 million people constitutes the largest bilingual and binational workforce in the Western Hemisphere. The city is home to three publicly traded companies, and former Western Refining, now Endeavor, as well as home to the Medical Center of the Americas, the only medical research and care provider complex in West Texas and Southern New Mexico, and the University of Texas at El Paso, the city's primary university. The city hosts the annual Sun Bowl college football postseason game, the second oldest bowl game in the country. El Paso has a strong federal and military presence. William Beaumont Army Medical Center, Biggs Army Airfield, and Fort Bliss call the city home. Fort Bliss is one of the largest military complexes of the United States Army and the largest training area in the United States. Also headquartered in El Paso are the DIA Domestic Field Division 7, El Paso Intelligence Center, Joint Task Force North, United States Border Patrol El Paso Sector, and the U.S. Border Patrol Special Operations Group, SOG. In 2010 and 2018, El Paso received an All-America City Award. El Paso ranked in the top three safest large cities in the United States between 1997 and 2014, including holding the title of safest city between 2011 and 2014. Topic: History. Topic. Early years The El Paso region has had human settlement for thousands of years, as evidenced by fulsome points from hunter-gatherers found at Hueco tanks. The evidence suggests 10,000 to 12,000 years of human habitation. The earliest known cultures in the region were maize farmers. When the Spanish arrived, the Manso, Suma, and Jumano tribes populated the area. These were subsequently incorporated into the Mestizo culture, along with immigrants from central Mexico, captives from Comancheria, and Genizaros of various ethnic groups. The Mescalero Apache were also present. 
Spanish explorer Don Juan de Oñate was born in 1550 in Zacatecas, Zacatecas, Mexico and was the first New Spain Mexico explorer known to have observed the Rio Grande near El Paso. In 1598, celebrating a Thanksgiving Mass there on April 30, 1598, decades before the Pilgrims' Thanksgiving. However, the four survivors of the Narvaez expedition, Alvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca, Alonso del Castillo Maldonado, Andrés Durantes de Carranza, and his enslaved Moor Estebanico, are thought to have passed through the area in the mid-1530s. El Paso del Norte present-day Ciudad Juárez was founded on the south bank of the Rio Bravo del Norte Rio Grande, in 1659 by Fray García de San Francisco. In 1680, the small village of El Paso became the temporary base for Spanish governance of the territory of New Mexico as a result of the Pueblo Revolt, until 1692 when Santa Fe was reconquered and once again became the capital. The Texas Revolution 1836 was generally not felt in the region, as the American population was small, not being more than 10% of the population. However, the region was claimed by Texas as part of the treaty signed with Mexico and numerous attempts were made by Texas to bolster these claims. However, the villages which consisted of what is now El Paso and the surrounding area remained essentially a self-governed community with both representatives of the Mexican and Texan government negotiating for control until Texas irrevocably took control in 1846. During this interregnum, 1836–1848, Americans nonetheless continued to settle the region. As early as the mid-1840s, alongside long extant Hispanic settlements such as the Rancho de Juan Maria Ponce de León, Anglo settlers such as Simeon Hart and Hugh Stevenson had established thriving communities of American settlers owing allegiance to Texas. Stevenson, who had married into the local Hispanic aristocracy, established the Rancho de San José de la Concordia, which became the nucleus of Anglo and Hispanic settlement within the limits of modern day El Paso. In 1844, the Republic of Texas, which claimed the area, wanted a chunk of the Santa Fe trade. The Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo effectively made the settlements on the north bank of the river part of the U.S., separate from Old El Paso del Norte on the Mexican side. The present Texas-New Mexico boundary placing El Paso on the Texas side was drawn in the Compromise of 1850. El Paso remained the largest settlement in New Mexico as part of the Republic of Mexico until its cession to the U.S. in 1848, when the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo specified the border was to run north of El Paso de Norte around the Ciudad Juarez Cathedral which became part of the state of Chihuahua. El Paso County was established in March 1850, with San Elizario as the first county seat. The United States Senate fixed a boundary between Texas and New Mexico at the 32nd parallel, thus largely ignoring history and topography. A military post called, the post opposite El Paso 
meaning opposite El Paso del Norte, across the Rio Grande, was established in 1849 on Coons Rancho beside the settlement of Franklin, which became the nucleus of the future El Paso, Texas. After the Army left in 1851, the rancho went into default and was repossessed. In 1852, a post office was established on the rancho bearing the name El Paso as an example of cross-border town naming until El Paso del Norte was renamed Juarez in 1888. After changing hands twice more the El Paso Company was set up in 1859 and bought the property, hiring Anson Mills to survey and lay out the town forming the current street plan of downtown El Paso. During the Civil War, a Confederate presence was in the area until it was captured by the Union California Column in 1862. It was then headquarters for the 5th Regiment California Volunteer Infantry until December 1864. After the Civil War's conclusion, the town's population began to grow as Texans continued to move into the villages and soon became the majority. El Paso itself, incorporated in 1873, encompassed the small area communities that had developed along the river. In the 1870s, a population of 23 non-Hispanic whites and 150 Hispanics was reported. With the arrival of the Southern Pacific, Texas and Pacific and the Atchison, Topeka and Santa Fe railroads in 1881, the population boomed to 10,000 by the 1890 census, with many Anglo-Americans, recent immigrants, old Hispanic settlers, and recent arrivals from Mexico. The location of El Paso as well as the arrival of these more wild newcomers caused the city to become a violent and wild boomtown known as the Six Shooter Capital, because of its lawlessness. Indeed, prostitution and gambling flourished until World War I, when the Department of the Army pressured El Paso authorities to crack down on vice thus benefiting vice in neighboring Ciudad Juarez. With the suppression of the vice trade and in consideration of the city's geographic position, the city continued into developing as a premier manufacturing, transportation, and retail center of the U.S. Southwest. Topic: 1900 present. In 1909, William Howard Taft and Porfirio Diaz planned a summit in El Paso, Texas, and Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, a historic first meeting between a U.S. president and a Mexican president and also the first time an American president would cross the border into Mexico but tensions rose on both sides of the border, including threats of assassination, so the Texas Rangers, 4,000 U.S. and Mexican troops, U.S. Secret Service agents, FBI agents and U.S. Marshals were all called in to provide security. Frederick Russell Burnham, the celebrated scout, was put in charge of a 250 private security detail hired by John Hayes Hammond, who in addition to owning large investments in Mexico was a close friend of Taft from Yale and a U.S. vice presidential candidate in 1908. On October 16, the day of the summit, Burnham and private C.R. Moore, a Texas Ranger, discovered a man holding a concealed palm pistol standing at the El Paso Chamber of Commerce building along the procession route. 
Burnham and Moore captured, disarmed, and arrested the assassin within only a few feet of Taft and Diaz. By 1910, the overwhelming number of people in the city were Americans, creating a settled environment. However, this period was short-lived as the Mexican Revolution greatly impacted the city, bringing an influx of refugees, and capital, to the bustling boom town. Spanish-language newspapers, theaters, movie houses, and schools were established, many supported by a thriving Mexican refugee middle class. Large numbers of clerics, intellectuals, and businessmen took refuge in the city, particularly between 1913 and 1915. Ultimately, the violence of the Mexican Revolution followed with the large Mexican diaspora which had fled into El Paso. In 1915 and again in 1916 and 1917 various Mexican revolutionary societies planned, staged, and launched violent attacks against both Texans and their political Mexican opponents in El Paso. This state of affairs eventually led to the vast Plan de San Diego which resulted in the murder of 21 white citizens. The subsequent reprisals by local militia soon caused an escalation of violence, wherein it is estimated that approximately 300 Mexicans and Mexican Americans lost their lives. These actions affected almost every resident of the entire lower Rio Grande Valley, resulting in millions of dollars of losses. The end result of the Plan of San Diego was longstanding enmity between the two racial groups. Simultaneously, other Texans and Americans gravitated to the city, and by 1920, along with the U.S. Army troops, the population exceeded 100,000 and whites once again were in the clear majority. Nonetheless, the city increased the segregation between Mexicans and Mexican Americans with Americans. In reply, the Catholic Church attempted to garner the Mexican American community's allegiance through education and political and civic involvement organizations, including the National Catholic Welfare Fund. In 1916, the Census Bureau reported El Paso's population as 53% Mexican and 44% white. Mining and other industries gradually developed in the area. The El Paso and Northeastern Railway was chartered in 1897 to help extract the natural resources of surrounding areas, especially in southeastern New Mexico Territory. The 1920s and 1930s saw the emergence of major business development in the city, partially enabled by Prohibition era bootlegging. However, the military demobilization, and an agricultural economic depression which hit places like El Paso first before the larger Great Depression was felt in the big cities, hit the city hard. In turn, as in the rest of the United States, the Depression era overall hit the city hard, and El Paso's population declined through the end of World War II with most of population losses coming from the white community. Nonetheless, whites remained the majority to the 1940s. During and following the war, military expansion in the area, as well as oil discoveries in the Permian Basin, North America, helped to engender rapid economic expansion in the mid 1900s. Copper smelting, oil refining, and the proliferation of low-wage industries particularly garment making, led the city's growth. Additionally, the departure of region's rural population, which was mostly white, to cities like El Paso, brought a short-term burst of capital and labor. 
However, this was balanced by additional departures of middle-class Americans to other parts of the country which offered new and better paying jobs. In turn, local businesses looked south to the opportunities afforded by cheap Mexican labor. Furthermore, the period from 1942 to 1956 saw the Bracero program which brought in cheap Mexican labor into the rural area to replace the losses of the native white population. In turn, seeking better paying jobs these migrants also moved to El Paso. By 1965, Hispanics once again were a majority. Meanwhile, the post-war expansion slowed again in the 1960s, but the city continued to grow with the annexation of surrounding neighborhoods and in large part because of its significant economic relationship with Mexico. The Ferra strike, 1972 to 1974, occurred in El Paso, Texas. This strike was originated and led by Chicanas, or Mexican-American women, due to Farra Manufacturing Company, one of the largest factories in the city, being unorganized, low wages, discrimination, no benefits, lack of gender neutrality, health and safety hazards, and unattainable quotas. Texas Monthly described the Farrah strike as the strike of the century. Topic: <inaudible> Geography. El Paso is located at the intersection of three states: Texas, New Mexico, and Chihuahua, and two countries, the US and Mexico. It is the only major Texas city on Mountain Time. Ciudad Juarez used to be on Central Time, but both cities are now on Mountain Time. El Paso is closer to the capital cities of four other states, Phoenix, Arizona 345 miles away, Santa Fe, New Mexico 273 miles away, Ciudad Chihuahua, Chihuahua 218 miles away, and Hermosillo, Sonora 325 miles away than it is to the capital of its own state, Austin 528 miles away. It is closer to Los Angeles, California, 700 miles away, than it is to Orange, 764 miles away, the easternmost town in the state. El Paso is located within the Chihuahuan Desert, the easternmost section of the Basin and Range region. The Franklin Mountains extend into El Paso from the north and nearly divide the city into two sections, the west side forms the beginnings of the Mesilla Valley, and the east side expands into the desert and lower valley. They connect in the central business district at the southern end of the mountain range. The city's elevation is 3,800 feet 1, meters above sea level. North Franklin Mountain is the highest peak in the city at 7,192 feet 2, meters above sea level. The peak can be seen from 60 miles 100 kilometers in all directions. Additionally, this mountain range is home to the famous natural red clay formation, the Thunderbird, from which the local Coronado High School gets its mascot's name. According to the United States Census Bureau, the city has a total area of 256.3 square miles, 663.7 square kilometers, the 24,000 acre, 9,700 hectares Franklin Mountains State Park, 
the largest urban park in the United States, lies entirely in El Paso, extending from the north and dividing the city into several sections along with Fort Bliss and El Paso International Airport. The Rio Grande Rift, which passes around the southern end of the Franklin Mountains, is where the Rio Grande flows. The river defines the border between El Paso and Ciudad Juarez to the south and west until the river turns north of the border with Mexico, separating El Paso from Doña Ana County, New Mexico. Mount Cristo Rey, an example of a pluton, rises within the Rio Grande Rift just to the west of El Paso on the New Mexico side of the Rio Grande. Nearby volcanic features include Kilburn Hole and Hunts Hole, which are Mar volcanic craters 30 miles 50 kilometers west of the Franklin Mountains. Topic. Climate El Paso has a transitional climate between cold desert climate and hot desert climate featuring hot summers, with little humidity, and cool to mild dry winters. Rainfall averages 9.7 in 250 mm per year, much of which occurs during the summer from July through September, and is predominantly caused by the North American monsoon. During this period, southerly and southeasterly winds carry moisture from the Pacific, the Gulf of California, and the Gulf of Mexico into the region. When this moisture moves into the El Paso area and places to the southwest, orographic lift from the mountains, combined with strong daytime heating, causes thunderstorms, some severe enough to produce flash flooding and hail, across the region. The sun shines 302 days per year on average in El Paso, 83% of daylight hours, according to the National Weather Service. From this, the city is nicknamed the Sun City. Due to its arid, windy climate, El Paso often experiences sand and dust storms during the dry season, particularly during the springtime between March and early May. With an average wind speed often exceeding 30 miles per hour, 50 kilometers per hour, and gusts that have been measured at over 75 miles per hour, 120 kilometers per hour, these wind storms kick up large amounts of sand and dust from the desert, causing loss of visibility. El Paso and the nearby mountains also receive snow. Weather systems have produced over 1 foot 30 centimeters of snow on several occasions. In the 1982–1983 winter season, three major snowstorms produced record seasonal snowfall. On December 25 to 26, 1982, 6.0 inches (15 centimeters) of snow fell, producing a white Christmas for the city. This was followed by another 7.0 inches (18 centimeters) on December 30 to 31, 1982. On April 4 to 7, 1983, 16.5 inches (42 centimeters) of snow fell on El Paso, bringing the seasonal total to nearly 30 inches (76 centimeters). On December 13 to 14, 1987, a record storm dumped over 22 inches (56 centimeters) of snow on El Paso, and 2 weeks later, December 25 to 26, another 3 inches (7.6 centimeters) fell, bringing the monthly total for December 1987 to an all-time record high of 25.9 inches. 66 centimeters of snow 
The average annual snowfall for the city varies widely between different neighborhoods at different elevations, but is 6.1 inches centimeters at the airport but with a median of zero, meaning most years see no snow at all. Snow is most rare around Isleta and the Eastern Valley area, which usually include large numbers of palm trees. In the higher neighborhoods, palm trees are more vulnerable to snow and cold snaps and are often seen with brown, frost damaged fronds. One example of El Paso's varying climate at its most extreme was the damaging winter storm of early February 2011, which caused closures of schools, businesses, and City Hall. The snow, which was light, stopped after about a day, but during the ensuing cold episode, municipal utilities went into a crisis. The high temperature on February 2, 2011 was 15 degrees Fahrenheit minus 9 degrees Celsius, the lowest daily maximum on record. In addition, the low temperature on February 3 was 1 degree Fahrenheit minus 17 degrees Celsius, breaking the 5 degrees Fahrenheit minus 15 degrees Celsius monthly record low set during the cold wave of 1899. Loss of desert vegetation, such as Mexican, California palm trees, oleanders, and ice plants to the cold weather was one of the results. Two local power plants failed, forcing El Paso Electric to institute rolling blackouts over several days, and electric wires were broken, causing localized blackouts. Many water utility pipes froze, causing areas of the city to be without water for several days. Monthly means range from 45.5 degrees Fahrenheit (7.5 degrees Celsius) in December to 83.5 degrees Fahrenheit (28 6 degrees Celsius in July, but high temperatures typically peak in June before the monsoon arrives, while daily low temperatures typically peak in July or early August with the higher humidity the monsoon brings, translating to warmer nights. On average, there are 52 nights of at or below freezing lows, 109 days of 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 32 degrees Celsius, plus highs and 20 days of 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 38 degrees Celsius, plus highs annually. It is extremely rare for temperatures to stay below the freezing mark all day. The city's record high is 114 degrees Fahrenheit, 46 degrees Celsius on June 30, 1994, and its record low is minus 8 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 22 degrees Celsius on January 11, 1962. The highest daily minimum was 85 degrees Fahrenheit, 29 degrees Celsius on July 1st and 3. 1994, with weather records for the area maintained by the National Weather Service since 1879. <inaudible> <inaudible> Flooding Although the average annual rainfall is only about 9.7 in 250 mm, many parts of El Paso are subject to occasional flooding during intense summer monsoonal thunderstorms. In late July and early August 2006, up to 10 in 250 mm of rain fell in a week. The flood control reservoirs overflowed and caused major flooding citywide. The city staff estimated damage to public infrastructure at $21 million, and to private property residential and commercial at $77 million. 
Much of the damage was associated with development in recent decades in arroyos protected by flood control dams and reservoirs, and the absence of any storm drain utility in the city to handle the flow of rain water. Time zone El Paso is located in the far western corner of Texas, which is roughly the only part of the state that is located within the mountain time zone, as opposed to the central time zone. Neighborhoods <inaudible> 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 Downtown and central El Paso This part of town contains some of the city's oldest and most historic neighborhoods. Located in the heart of the city, it is home to approximately 44,993 people. Development of the area started in 1827 with the first resident, Juan Maria Ponce de Leon, a wealthy merchant from Paso del Norte, present-day Ciudad Juarez, who built the region's first structure establishing Rancho Ponce within the vicinity of S. El Paso Street and Paisano Drive when the city was barely beginning to gain its roots. Today, central El Paso has grown into the center of the city's economy and a thriving urban community. It contains numerous historic sites and landmarks mostly in the Sunset Heights district. It is close to the El Paso International Airport, the International Border, and Fort Bliss. It is part of the El Paso Independent School District. Dr. James Day, an El Paso historian, said that downtown's main business area was originally centered between 2nd Avenue now Paisano Drive, and San Francisco Avenue. At a later point the main business area was centered around Stanton Street and Santa Fe Street. In the late 1800s most of the white American residents lived to the north of the non-white areas, living in brick residences along McGoffin, Myrtle, and San Antonio Avenues. Hispanic American residents lived in an area called Chihuahua, Little Chihuahua which was located south of 2nd Avenue and west of Santa Fe Street. Several African Americans and around 300 Chinese Americans also lived in Chihuahua. Many of the Chinese Americans participated in the building of railroads in the El Paso area. Another downtown neighborhood is El Segundo Barrio, which is near the United States Mexico border. Northwest El Paso Better known as West El Paso or the West Side, the area includes a portion of the Rio Grande floodplain upstream from downtown which is known locally as the Upper Valley and is located on the west side of the Franklin Mountains. The upper valley is the greenest part of the county due to the Rio Grande. The west side is home to some of the most affluent neighborhoods within the city, such as the Coronado Hills and Country Club neighborhoods. It is one of the fastest growing areas of El Paso. Topic: West Central El Paso. West Central El Paso is located north of Interstate 10 and west of the Franklin Mountains. The University of Texas at El Paso and the Cincinnati Entertainment District are located in the heart of the area. 
Historic districts Kern Place and Sunset Heights are in this part of town. Kern Place was founded in 1914 by Peter E. Kern, for whom the neighborhood was named. The homes of Kern Place are unique in architecture and some were built by residents themselves. One of the better known homes is the Paul Luckett home located at 1201 Cincinnati Avenue above Madeline Park, and is made of local rock. It is known as the castle, due to its round walls and a crenellated rooftop, Kern Place is extremely popular with college and university students. The area is known for its glitzy entertainment district, restaurants and coffee shops who cater to both business patrons and university students. After UTEP's basketball and football games, UTEP fans pack the Kern Place area for food and entertainment at Cincinnati Street a small bar district. This bar scene has grown over the years and has attracted thousands to its annual Mardi Gras block party as well as after sporting events or concerts. Young men and women make up the majority of the crowds who stop in between classes or after work. Sunset Heights is one of the most historic areas in town, which has existed since the latter part of the 1890s. Many wealthy residents have had their houses and mansions built on this hill. Although some buildings have been renovated to their former glory, but many have been neglected and have deteriorated. During the Mexican Revolution, a widely popular Mexican revolutionary leader, Doroteo Arango, also known as Francisco Pancho Villa, owned and resided in this area during the 1910s. During the 1910 Mexican Revolution many Mexicans fled Mexico and settled in Sunset Heights. Topic. Northeast El Paso This part of town is located north of central El Paso and east of the Franklin Mountains. Development of the area was extensive during the 1950s and 1960s. It is one of the more ethnically diverse areas in the city due to the concentration of military families. The Northeast has not developed as rapidly as other areas like East El Paso and Northwest El Paso, but its development is steadily increasing. It is expected that the population will grow more rapidly as a result of the troop increase at Fort Bliss in the coming years. The area has also gained recognition throughout the city for the outstanding high school athletic programs at Andrus High School, Parkland High School, Irvin High School, and Chapin High School. Topic. East El Paso The area is located north of Interstate 10, east of Airway Boulevard, and south of Montana Avenue. It is the largest and fastest growing area of town with a population of over 200,000. It includes the 79,936 zip code, which was considered in 2013 as the most populous in the nation with over 114,000 people. Its neighborhoods are mainly middle class, but does have a considerable number of affluent neighborhoods. East El Paso is noted also for its ridges and cliffs which offer desirable views of the lower valley, the Franklin Mountains and downtown El Paso. It also possesses the greatest number of entertainment venues in the city. Topic. Mission Valley 
formerly known as the Lower Valley, it includes part of East Side and all Lower Valley districts. It is the third largest area of the city, behind East El Paso and Central El Paso. Hawkins Road and Interstate 10 border the Mission Valley. This location is considered the oldest area of El Paso, dating back to the late 17th century when present-day Texas was under the rule of Nueva España New Spain. In 1680 the Isleta Pueblo tribe revolted against the Spaniards who were pushed south to what is now El Paso. Some Spaniards and tribe members settled here permanently. Soon afterward, three Spanish missions were built, they remain standing, currently functioning as churches, Isleta Mission 1682, La Mission de Corpus Christi y de San Antonio de la Isleta del Sur, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, Socorro Mission 1759, Nuestra Señora de la Purísima Concepción del Socorro, minus 1759 and San Elizario Chapel, Capilla de San Elsir, minus 1789. On April 30, 1598, the northward bound Spanish conquistadors crossed large sand dunes about 27 miles south of present day downtown El Paso. It is said that the expeditionaries and their horses ran toward the river, and two horses drank themselves to death. Don Juan de Oñate, a new Spain-born conquistador of Spanish parents, was an expedition leader who ordered a big feast north of the Rio Grande in what is now San Elizario. This was the first documented and true Thanksgiving in North America. Oñate declared La Toma taking possession, claiming all territory north of the Rio Grande for King Philip II of Spain. Isleta del Sur Pueblo related to the insurgent Isleta Pueblo tribe is also located in this valley. The Tigua pronounced Tiwa is one of three Indian tribes in Texas whose sovereignty is recognized by the United States government. Isleta is spelled with a Y, because 19th century script did not differentiate between a capital Y and a capital I. Some people in this area and its twin city across the river, Ciudad Juarez, are direct descendants of the Spaniards. Topic: <laughs> Texas and New Mexico suburbs. El Paso is surrounded by many cities and communities in both Texas and New Mexico. The most populated suburbs in Texas are Socorro, Horizon City, Fort Bliss and San Elizario. Other Texas suburbs are Anthony, Canatillo, Sparks, Fabens and Vinton. Although Anthony, Santa Teresa, Sunland Park, and Chaparral lie adjacent to El Paso County, they are considered to be part of the Las Cruces New Mexico metropolitan area by the United States Census Bureau. Topic. Cityscape Topic. Tallest buildings El Paso's tallest building, the Wells Fargo Plaza, was built in the early 1970s as State National Plaza. The black-windowed, 302-foot building is famous for its 13 white horizontal lights 18 lights per row on the east and west sides of the building, and 7 bulbs per row on the north and south sides that were lit at night. 
The tower did use a design of the United States flag during the July 4 holidays, as well as the American hostage crisis of 1980, and was lit continuously following the September 11 attacks in 2001 until around 2006. During the Christmas holidays, a design of a Christmas tree was used, and at times, the letters UTEP were used to support University of Texas at El Paso Athletics. The tower is now only lit during the holiday months, or when special events take place in the city. Topic. Demographics As of 2010 U.S. Census, 649,121 people, 216,694 households, and 131,104 families resided in the city. The population density was 2,263.0 people per square mile 873.7 per square kilometers. There were 227,605 housing units at an average density of 777.5 per square miles, 300.2 per square kilometers. Recent census estimates say that the racial composition of El Paso is white 92.0%, non-Hispanic whites 11.8%, African American or black 3.9%, two or more races 1.5%, Asian 1.3%, Native American 1.0%, and Native Hawaiian and other Pacific Islander 0.2%. Ethnically, the city was 82.8% .8 Hispanic or Latino of any race. There were 216,894 households in 2010, out of which 37.6% had children under the age of 18 living with them, 48.5% were married couples living together, 20.7% had a female householder with no husband present, and 25.3% were not families. About 21.5% of all households were made up of individuals, and 24.9% had someone living alone who was 65 years of age or older. The average household size was 2.95 and the average family size was 3.47. In the city, the population was distributed as 29.1% under the age of 18, 7.5% from 20 to 24, 26.2% from 25 to 44, 22.8% from 45 to 64, and 11.1% who were 65 years of age or older. The median age was 32.5 years. The median income for a household in the city was $44,431, and for a family was $50,247. Males had a median income of $28,989 versus $21,540 for females. The per capita income for the city was $21,120. About 17.3% of families and 20.3% of the population were below the poverty line, including 28.5% of those under age 18 and 18.4% of those age 65 or over. 
Topic economy El Paso has a diversified economy focused primarily within international trade, military, government civil service, oil and gas, health care, tourism and service sectors. The El Paso metro area had a GDP of $29.03 billion in 2017. There was also $92 billion worth of trade in 2012. Over the past 15 years the city has become a significant location for American-based call centers. Cotton, fruit, vegetables, and livestock are also produced in the area. El Paso has added a significant manufacturing sector with items and goods produced that include petroleum, metals, medical devices, plastics, machinery, defense-related goods and automotive parts. The city is the second busiest international crossing point in the U.S. behind San Diego. El Paso is home to one Fortune 500 company, Western Refining, which is listed on the New York Stock Exchange. This makes the city one of six Texas metro areas to have at least one Fortune 500 company call it home, the others being Houston, Dallas Fort Worth, San Antonio, Austin, and Corpus Christi. The second publicly traded company is Helen of Troy Limited, a NASDAQ listed company that manufactures personal health care products under many labels, such as OXO, Dr. Scholl's, Vidal Sassoon, Pert Plus, Brute, and Sunbeam, and the third is El Paso Electric, listed on the New York Stock Exchange, a public utility engaging in the generation, transmission, and distribution of electricity in West Texas and southern New Mexico. The fourth publicly traded company is Western Refining Logistics also traded in the New York Stock Exchange. It is a Western Refining subsidiary which owns, operates, develops, and acquires terminals, storage tanks, pipelines, and other logistics assets. More than 70 Fortune 500 companies have offices in El Paso, including AT&T, ADP, Boeing, Charles Schwab, Delphi, Dish Network, Eureka, Hoover, Raytheon, Prudential Financial, USAA and Verizon Wireless. Hispanic Business Magazine included 28 El Paso companies in its list of the 500 largest Hispanic-owned businesses in the United States. El Paso's 28 companies are second only to Miami's 57. The list of the largest Hispanic-owned businesses includes companies like Fred Loya Insurance, a Hispanic 500 company and the 18th largest Hispanic business in the nation. Other companies on the list are Dos Lunas Spirits, Dynatech Labs, Spira Footwear, Datamark, Inc. and El Taco Tote. El Paso was home to El Paso Corporation formerly known as El Paso Natural Gas Company. The city also has a large military presence with Fort Bliss, William Beaumont Army Medical Center and Biggs Army Airfield. The defense industry in El Paso employs over 41,000 and provides a $6 billion annual impact to the city's economy. In 2013, Fort Bliss was chosen as the newly configured U.S. Air Force Security Forces Regional Training Center which added 8,000 to 10,000 Air Force personnel annually. In addition to the military, the federal government has a strong presence in El Paso to manage its status and unique issues as an important border region. 
Operations headquartered in El Paso include the DIA Domestic Field Division 7, El Paso Intelligence Center, Joint Task Force North, U.S. Border Patrol El Paso Sector and U.S. Border Patrol Special Operations Group SOG. Call center operations employ more than 10,000 people in the area. Automatic data processing has an office in West El Paso, employing about 1,100 people with expansion plans to reach 2,200 by 2020. Tourism is another major industry in El Paso, bringing in $1.50 billion a year and over 2.3 million visitors annually due to the city's sunny weather, natural beauty, rich cultural history, and many outdoor attractions. Education is also a driving force in El Paso's economy. El Paso's three large school districts are among the largest employers in the area, employing more than 20,000 people among them. UTEP has an annual budget of nearly $418 million and employs nearly 4,800 people. A 2010 study by the university's Institute for Policy and Economic Development stated the university's impact on local businesses is $417 million annually. Topic: Arts and Culture. Topic. Annual cultural events and festivals Topic. Amigo Air Show Amigo Air Show is one of El Paso's premier events, and is ranked as one of the top ten air shows in the country. The show is filled with air entertainment and ground activities. Acts include the Franklin's Flying Circus, where performers walk on the wings of an airborne plane. Ground activities include the jet-powered school bus. After 31 years of being held at Biggs Army Airfield, the show was moved to Dona Ana Airport in 2014. Topic. KLAQ Great River Raft Race The KLAQ Great River Raft Race is an annual event celebrated on the second to last Saturday of June. Participants are encouraged to ride the river and float the Rio Grande with family and friends. The organizers encourage the building of unique rafts that will get you down the river with prizes and trophies awarded for the most points earned, best looking crew, and best decorated raft. The race starts at the Vinton Bridge and ends three miles downstream at the Canatillo Bridge. Topic. Southwestern International PRCA Rodeo The Southwestern International PRCA Rodeo is the 17th oldest rodeo in the nation and El Paso's longest-running sporting event. Consistently ranked as one of the top 50 shows in the country by the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association, this charitable event is a true celebration of Western culture and heritage. Topic. Fiesta de los Flores Fiesta de los Flores is the oldest Hispanic festival in the Southwest. The three-day fiesta is held each year during the Labor Day weekend and emphasizes El Paso's Hispanic heritage and culture. 
The festival attracts 20,000 to 30,000 visitors from El Paso County, New Mexico, West Texas and the state of Chihuahua, Mexico. Activities included in the fiesta are crowning of the Queen, a fiesta parade, senior appreciation dance, military appreciation day, and live entertainment. The fiesta is also well known for the authentic regional cuisine, arts and craft wares, games, and services available for the enjoyment of all segments of the attendees. Over 80 booths, sponsored by local vendors and non-profit organizations create the Hispanic ambience and culture. El Paso Balloon Fest The El Paso Balloon Fest is an annual event celebrated on Memorial Day weekend and is self-described as Three days of hot air balloons filling the El Paso skies, three afternoons of concerts and fun in the sun at Wet in Wild Waterworld in Anthony, Texas. Over 60 balloons take to the air annually from TFCU Launch Field which is adjacent to the water park. After the balloons launch, visitors have a weekend of water rides, swimming, concerts, and grilling. The concert aspect of the event features local bands, starting at noon, and different headlining artists in the afternoon. Overnight camping has been added for 2014. Topic. Music festivals Topic. El Paso Downtown Street Festival The annual El Paso Downtown Street Festival is held during the last weekend of June in downtown El Paso near the El Paso Convention Center. It is the oldest musical festival in the city and brings local, regional and nationally known acts. Topic. Neon Desert Music Festival The annual Neon Desert Music Festival is a two-day event usually held on the last Saturday and Sunday of May on five stages in downtown El Paso stretching from San Jacinto Plaza to Cleveland Square. The festival brings over 30 acts from the worlds of indie rock, Latin and electronic dance music. Topic. Music Under the Stars The outdoor concert series, started in 1983, is held annually at the Shamazal National Memorial and draws over 60,000 attendees. It features local and international performers with musical genres ranging from classical, country, Tejano, rock and others. The evening concerts are showcased every Sunday afternoon and start in early June and end in the middle of August. Topic. Sun City Music Festival the only El Paso musical festival not held downtown, instead it is held at Ascarit Park. The Sun City Music Festival is a two-day event dubbed as the largest electronic dance music festival in Texas. Topic. Texas Showdown Festival the Texas Showdown Festival is an annual event celebrating musicians and tattoo artists under one roof. 
Dubbed as the world's largest tattoo and musical festival, the event is held usually the last weekend of July at the El Paso County Coliseum. Topic: <laughs> Performing Arts. Topic: <laughs> Viva El Paso. The outdoor musical extravaganza Viva! El Paso is performed in the McElligan Canyon Amphitheater. It is locally produced and chronicles the 400-year history and cultural evolution of the El Paso region. The show is performed each Friday and Saturday night in June, July, and August. Viva, El Paso has entertained local residents and out-of-town visitors for over 35 years. <laughs> El Paso Symphony Orchestra the El Paso Symphony was established in the 1930s, it is the oldest performing arts organization in El Paso and the longest continuously running symphony orchestra in the state of Texas. It has received both national and international recognition as a result of its very successful tours of Germany in 1996 and Turkey in 2000, and continues to represent the El Paso region with pride and distinction. The El Paso Symphony Orchestra Association season is anchored by 12 classical concerts. Special events serve as outreach toward new audiences. Topic: <inaudible> Ballet in El Paso. Ballet was largely non-existent in El Paso until the arrival of Ingeborg Häuser, a professional ballerina from Germany, in the 1950s. Heuser taught ballet at the University of Texas at El Paso for 47 years and founded the city's first professional ballet company, firstly known as Texas Western Civic Ballet and eventually as Ballet El Paso. The company dissipated due to financial trouble in 1997 and Heuser retired from UTEP soon after. The El Paso Youth Ballet was founded in 2009 by Heuser's previous student, Marta Katz, following Heuser's departure from the university. With students from the Youth Ballet, Heuser staged her last Nutcracker in 2006. The youth company continues to perform the Nutcracker and other pre-professional pieces in and around the El Paso area. The company provides the only platform for young ballet dancers to train and perform at such a level within the city since the folding of Ballet El Paso. El Paso City Ballet is a current professional ballet company in El Paso, providing local employment for professional dancers in the field of ballet. The company performs a variety of classical and contemporary works choreographed by artistic director Lisa Scaff and artists from the U.S. and Latin America. It has been active since 2005, performing yearly productions. Theaters The Plaza Theater is a national historic building of significance built in 1930. It features the 2050-seat Kendall Kidd Performance Hall, and the smaller 200-seat Philanthropy Theater. 
It hosts Broadway productions, musical concerts, individual performers, and the annual Plaza Classic Film Festival. The Abraham Chavez Theater is a 2,500 seat concert hall adjacent to the Williams Convention Center. Its exterior resembles a sombrero and features a three story glass main entrance. The Abraham Chavez Theater is named after Maestro Abraham Chavez who was the longtime conductor of the El Paso Symphony. Inside, the theater has a 5,000-square-foot lobby and a 40-by-56-foot stage as well as 14 dressing rooms. The theater's seating is in three levels. There is also a meeting room adjacent to the theater. Events held at Chavez Theater include concerts, Broadway shows, graduation ceremonies, performances of the El Paso Symphony Orchestra, and other special events. McKelligan Canyon is a 90-acre park, located in the Franklin Mountains, open to hikers and picnickers. In the canyon, McKelligan Canyon Amphitheater is surrounded on three sides by canyon walls. The 1,500 seat amphitheater is used for concerts and special events, such as Viva. El Paso. The El Paso Playhouse is a community theater that provides entertainment and educational experiences to a diverse multicultural population through the high-quality production of plays and theatrical events. The Playhouse provides a venue for artists, technicians, patrons and community members to participate in the arts through regularly scheduled season productions, and holiday performances. The theater is affiliated with Kids N Co., a theater for child actors to children's performances. The UTEP Dinner Theater is located inside the campus of the University of Texas at El Paso and was founded in 1983 and is entirely produced, designed, and directed by students. The theater presents four fully staged musicals each season and a fully staged student-produced musical. Area museums The Centennial Museum and Chihuahuan Desert Gardens, located on the grounds of UTEP, includes a comprehensive collection of El Paso Brown, Native American pottery, as well as educational exhibits for students. The El Paso Museum of Archaeology is located on the eastern slope of North Franklin Mountain, west of Gateway South Boulevard on Transmountain Road. Its grounds include native plants of the American Southwest, as well samples of Native American shelters, in an unspoiled location. The museum includes dioramas for school children which illustrate the culture and geology of the American Southwest, such as Hueco tanks in El Paso County. One diorama, see image to the right, is of the Cueva de la Ala, Cave of the Pot, which is located in the Sierra Madre of Chihuahua, an example of the Pakimi culture. The El Paso Museum of Art is located next to the Plaza Theater adjacent to San Jacinto Plaza, the public square downtown. It contains works of southwestern artists such as Tom Lee. Other area museums include El Paso Holocaust Museum and Study Center International Museum of Art El Paso El Paso Museum of History Fort Bliss Museums and Study Center Insights El Paso Science Museum 
the McGoffin Homestead, dating from 1875, is now a state historic site. The National Border Patrol Museum is located adjacent to the El Paso Museum of Archaeology. Railroad and Transportation Museum of El Paso The Gene Roddenberry Planetarium Links exhibits Topic. Sites within the city limits Isleta Mission is recognized as the oldest continuously operated parish in the state of Texas. Cathedral of St. Patrick erected in 1916 is the seat of the Roman Catholic Diocese of El Paso. Shamazal National Memorial El Paso Zoo, a 35-acre facility housing 220 species. McGoffin Home State Historic Site Plaza Hotel Union Depot El Paso High School University of Texas at El Paso The university's distinctive style is a type of fortress architecture, Di Zong, found in the present and former Buddhist mountain kingdoms of the Himalayas, Bhutan and Tibet. Sports El Paso is home to the Sun Bowl, the second oldest consecutive college football contest after the Rose Bowl. Its first game was held in 1935. On September 18, 2012, the City Council voted to approve the demolition of the ITS City Hall to make way for Southwest University Park, the new home of the El Paso Chihuahuas Triple A team, San Diego Padres affiliate. It opened in 2014. The team was purchased by Mountain Star Sports Group of El Paso. City Hall was demolished on April 14, 2013. The El Paso Marathon takes place annually since 2007. The El Paso Patriots played their last season in 2013 and are no longer an organization. El Paso will get a USL team starting in 2019. They will play at the Southwest University Park. Topic: Parks and Recreation. El Paso is home to the largest urban park in the nation. The Franklin Mountains State Park, with its more than 24,248 acres 9,813 hectares, is completely located within the city limits. It is considered a small range 23 miles long, 3 miles kilometers wide that extends from city north into New Mexico. It is home to the highest peak in the county North Franklin Mountain at 7,192 feet. The park is open year round for recreation, including hiking, mountain biking, picnicking, scenic driving, and views of the city. The Weiler Aerial Tramway is operated by the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department and is in the Franklin Mountains State Park. The tramway complex covers 196 acres (0.79 square kilometers) on the east side of the Franklin Mountains. The gondolas travel along two 2,600-foot (790 meters, 1 and 3 diameter steel cables to Ranger Peak, 5,632 feet (1,717 meters) above sea level. 
The trip takes about four minutes and lifts riders 940 feet 290 meters above the boarding area. The tramway was built in 1959 by KTSM Radio to aid in the construction of a transmitter tower. Carl O. Weiler managed the project. First opening to the public as the El Paso Aerial Tramway, the facility provided rides from 1960 to 1986, when high liability insurance costs forced the tram to stop public operations. The tram was only used to service the transmitter towers. Weiler donated the tramway for public use in his will. The Texas Parks and Wildlife Department accepted the donation in 1997 and renovated and reopened the tramway to the public in 2001. Hueco Tanks State Historic Site is a Texas historic site in the Hueco Tanks area, approximately 32 miles 51 kilometers northeast of downtown El Paso and just west of the Hueco Mountains. The park is popular for recreation such as birdwatching and bouldering, and is culturally and spiritually significant to many Native Americans. This significance is partially manifested in the pictographs, rock paintings that can be found throughout the region, many of which are thousands of years old. Hueco Tanks is also widely regarded as one of the best areas in the world for bouldering, rock climbing, low enough to attempt without ropes for protection, unique for its rock type, the concentration and quality of the climbing, and after which the Hueco bouldering grades are named. In any given climbing season, which generally lasts from October through March, it is common for climbers from across Europe, Asia, and Australia to visit the park. Since implementation of the public use plan, following a brief closure of the entire park due to the park service's inability to manage the growing crowds of international climbers, volunteer or commercial guides are required to access more than two thirds of the park's area. Only North Mountain is accessible without guides, and then only for about 70 people at any given time. The park offers camping and showers for a small fee a day or, as is most popular for climbers, the nearby Hueco Rock Ranch offers camping where climbers can relax and socialize. The Shamazal National Memorial is a 54.90-acre memorial park that serves primarily as a cultural center and contains art galleries, a theater, and an amphitheater. A museum detailing the history of the Mexico-U.S. border is located inside the visitor center. The city is also home to 242 municipal parks. Topic: <inaudible> Botanical Gardens. The Chihuahuan Desert Gardens (CDG) display the flora of the Chihuahuan Desert and adjacent regions in the United States and Mexico. The gardens were formally dedicated in September 1999 and contain over 625 different species of plants, comprising one of the largest captive assemblages of Chihuahuan desert flora in the world. The El Paso Municipal Rose Garden officially named the All-American Rose Selection AAR's Public Garden is one of over 100 certified gardens within the United States. There are over 1,900 rosebushes with 500 varieties. The wrought iron fenced garden has wide walkways with handicap accessibility, raised beds, a waterfall, and trees and shrubs. 
Several new rose varieties are planted each year, and after two years the highest rated are named and receive the AAR's symbol. Feather Lake is a 43.5-acre wildlife sanctuary based on a 40-acre wetland built by the city of El Paso in 1969 as a stormwater retention basin. Since 1976, the El Paso, Trans-Pecos Audubon Society has leased this land from the city and managed it for wildlife. Over 200 different species of birds, especially those associated with water, have been observed at the sanctuary. Fauna residing there include muskrats, spiny softshell turtles, pond sliders, and trans-pecos striped whiptail lizards. Keystone Heritage Park comprises an archaic period archaeological site, wetlands, and a desert botanical garden. The 4,500-year-old site is one of the oldest villages in the United States. The wetlands are home to many birds, and over 200 species have been spotted there on their seasonal migrations. The botanical garden features a variety of native plants, and includes a pavilion and a replica of an archaic period brush hut. The newest component, the Chihuahuan Desert Experience, is a work in progress that will allow visitors to stroll the 900-mile length of desert over a 17-acre recreation of the plant indigenous life. Rio Bosque Wetlands is a 372-acre city park, managed by the Center for Environmental Resource Management of the University of Texas at El Paso, which began restoration efforts in 1998. In the fall and winter, water flows through the park along the route of the river before it was confined within levees in the 1930s. Many animals and birds have returned to the area as the restoration proceeds, and over 200 species of birds have been sighted. Golf courses. The metro area has 16 golf courses including Butterfield Trail Golf Club, the only public premium daily fee Tom Fazio designed golf course in the state of Texas. It was ranked number one in Texas and number three in the nation on Golf Week's 2013 Best Municipal Golf Courses. Other golf courses found in the county include Next door in Dona Ana County there are the following golf courses. Topic. Government Topic. City The city government is officially nonpartisan. Mayors and city council members are elected for four-year terms and may not be elected more than twice or serve for more than ten years in their respective offices. Municipal elections are currently held in May in odd-numbered years, but a voter-approved charter amendment will change this to November in even-numbered years, beginning in 2018. Council members elected in 2015 will serve through December 2018, and council members and the mayor elected in 2017 will serve through December 2020. Those elected in 2018 and 2020 will serve regular four year terms. The city operates under a council manager form of government. 
Power is concentrated in the eight-member elected city council and mayor, who hire a manager to carry out its directives and oversee the delivery of public services. The current city manager is Tommy Gonzalez and the current mayor of El Paso is Di Margo, who was elected to the office in 2017. The terms of Mayor Margo and Councilors Anello, Hernandez, Morgan, and Rivera will end in 2020. The terms of Lizarraga, Ordaz, Salcido, and Svarsbein will end in 2022. Ordaz has been on the council since 2014, Svarsbein since 2015, Anello, Hernandez, Lizarraga, Morgan, and Rivera since 2017, and Salcido since 2018. Due to the term limits clause of the city charter Ordaz and Svarsbein are ineligible for re-election. All other councillors and the mayor are eligible for re-election. Topic: County. The El Paso County Judge is Ricardo Samanigo, and the county commissioners are Carlos Leon, Precinct One; David Stout, Precinct Two; Vince Perez, Precinct Three; and Carl Robinson, Precinct Four. The commissioners and the county judge are Democrats. Leon and Perez were first elected to their positions in 2012, were re-elected in 2016, and have been in office since 2013. Stout was first elected to his position in 2014, and has been in office since 2015. Samanigo and Robinson were first elected in 2018, and have been in office since 2019. Topic State The El Paso metropolitan area is represented in the Texas State House by Democrats Cesar Blanco, Art Fierro, Mary Gonzalez, Joe Moody, and Lena Ortega, and in the State Senate by Jose R. Rodriguez. D. El Paso, the Texas Department of Criminal Justice operates the El Paso I District Parole Office in the city. The El Paso 2 District Parole Office is in an unincorporated area east of Horizon City. Topic: Federal. El Paso City and County vote overwhelmingly Democratic, like most of the Texas-Mexico border area and urban Texas, in the United States House of Representatives, most of El Paso is part of Texas's 16th Congressional District represented by Democrat Veronica Escobar. A small sliver in the eastern part of the city is part of Texas's 23rd Congressional District, represented by Republican Will Hurd. The current U.S. Senators for Texas are Ted Cruz R. Texas, and John Cornyn R. Texas. Topic. Education El Paso is home to the University of Texas at El Paso, the largest public university in the region. UTEP was ranked as the seventh best university in Washington Monthly's 2013 National University Rankings, just behind Stanford and ahead of Harvard. Also, the university's School of Engineering is the nation's top producer of Hispanic engineers with MS and PhD degrees. El Paso is also home to Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center at El Paso, 
Paul L. Foster School of Medicine, Texas Tech College of Architecture at El Paso, Brightwood College, Park University, Southwest University, Webster University and the University of Phoenix. Also due to its proximity, many El Paso students attend New Mexico State University where the school offers in-state tuition to El Paso County residents. The El Paso Community College serves most of the area as well as several technical schools and for-profit schools. El Pasoans also have access to the Doña Ana Community College with campuses in Sunland Park, Anthony and Chaparral, New Mexico. This community college is a part of the New Mexico State University system. El Paso area students primarily attend public schools in four school districts, El Paso Independent School District, Isleta Independent School District, Socorro Independent School District and Canatillo Independent School District. Numerous accredited private preparatory schools also serve El Paso students. These include various pre-high school religious, Christian, Catholic, Jewish affiliates and Montessori schools, Cathedral High School, Loreto Academy, Father Yermo High School, Lydia Patterson Institute, Faith Christian Academy, El Paso Jewish Academy, Rose of Sharon Christian Academy, Zion Lutheran Day School and Radford School. The University of El Paso offers the country's only bilingual MFA creative writing program. El Paso is home to bi national economic development groups, the hub of human innovation and technology hub. The industry group's tertiary vocational programs, give workforce training in automation, robotics, and AI technology. Topic. Public libraries The El Paso Public Library serves the needs of the public in El Paso, Texas. It consists of 12 branches, a bookmobile, a mobile computer classroom and a mobile outreach unit Kidsmobile. It also has multiple outreach services available. Topic Media Topic Newspapers The main newspapers are the English language daily El Paso Times, founded in 1881, the Spanish language daily El Diario de El Paso, and the online newspaper El Paso Herald Post started in 2015. The original and defunct El Paso Herald Post was also founded in 1881 as the El Paso Herald, which then merged with the El Paso Post in 1931. The paper was shut down in 1997. El Paso also has some weekly and niche magazines. El Paso Developmental News El Paso Inc. El Paso Scene. La Palaca. The City Magazine. The Prospector, published by the University of Texas at El Paso. Topic: Radio stations. Radio stations from Las Cruces, New Mexico, and Ciudad Juarez, Chihuahua, can also be heard within the El Paso market. Topic: Television. 
El Paso was the largest city in the United States without a PBS television station within the city limits until 1978. El Paso viewers had to watch Channel 22, KRWG, from Las Cruces until 1978. In fact, the city had only three English-speaking channels and two Spanish-language channels Channel 2 and Channel 5 from Juarez, and cable TV subscribers in the 1970s and 1980s could receive four Los Angeles independent channels, KTLA, KHJ, KTTV and KCOP as well as Spanish-language stations KMEX of Los Angeles and KWEX of San Antonio usually sharing the same cable channel slot. Over time, as more television stations signed on, more cable channels were added and those stations added network affiliations. The Los Angeles and San Antonio stations disappeared from the lineup. The last to be removed was KTLA in the fall of 2006 as a consequence of the WBUPN merger into the CW, when KVIA-TV launched a digital subchannel with the network's programming. El Paso's current television stations are as shown in the table below. KDBC 4.1 CBS KDBC TV 4.2 TBD METV 4.3 METV KVIA 7.1 ABC KVIA TV 7.2 CW KVIA TV 7.3 Ion KVIA TV 7.4 Azteca KTSM TV 9.1 NBC KTSM TV 9.2 Estrella KTSM TV 9.3 Escape KTSM TV 9.4 Laugh KCOS 13.1 PBS KCOS 1313.2 EPCC TV KCOS 1313.3 Create KCOS 1313.4 City 15 KFOX TV 14.1 Fox KFOX TV 14.2 Comet KFOX TV 14.3 Charge KFOX TV 14.4 Stadium Kin TV 26.1 Univision Kin TV 26.2 Grit Kin TV 26.3 LA TV Kin TV 26.4 Bounce KTDO 48.1 Telemundo KTFN 65.1 Unimas KTFN 65.2 Justice Network KTFN 65 3 Quest Topic Cellular Phone Coverage KTSM TV reports that cellular phone users in El Paso may be subject to international calling fees. Topic: In popular culture. Topic: 
Infrastructure Topic Healthcare El Paso is the medical hub of West Texas and southern New Mexico, hosting numerous state-of-the-art medical centers. Some of the city's top hospitals include William Beaumont Army Medical Center, Sierra Medical Center, Las Palmas Medical Center, Del Sol Medical Center, Sierra Providence East Medical Center, El Paso Children's Hospital, and Providence Memorial Hospital. University Medical Center is the only level 1 trauma center in the region. William Beaumont Army Medical Center will be replaced by a new state-of-the-art $650 million Fort Bliss Replacement Hospital expected to open in 2017. West El Paso will be getting a new $120 million 140-bed teaching hospital complex with construction expected to be completed by late 2016. The hospital will be affiliated with the Texas Tech Paul L. Foster School of Medicine. El Paso is also home to the Medical Center of the Americas, an integrated complex of medical facilities anchored by Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center at El Paso. Paul L. Foster School of Medicine, its primary teaching hospital University Medical Center, the El Paso Psychiatric Center and by the new El Paso Children's Hospital. It is also site to the future Cardwell Collaborative Biomedical Research Park and the Gail Grieve Hunt School of Nursing. Topic. Transportation El Paso is served by El Paso International Airport and Amtrak via the historic Union Depot. Several roads and highways connect El Paso, including Interstate 10, U.S. Highway 54 known locally as 54, the North-South Freeway or officially as the Patriot Freeway, Spur 601, Liberty Expressway, U.S. Highway 180 and U.S. Highway 62, Montana Avenue, U.S. Highway 85, Paisano Drive, Loop 375, Loop 478, Copia Street Pershing Drive Dyer Street, numerous Texas farm-to-market roads a class of State Highway commonly abbreviated to FM, and the city's original thoroughfare, State Highway 20, the eastern portion of which is known locally as Alameda Avenue, formerly U.S. Highway 80. Texas 20 also includes portions of Texas Avenue in central El Paso, Mesa Street from downtown to the west side, and Donovan Drive on the west side. Northeast El Paso is connected to West El Paso by Transmountain Road, Loop 375. The city also shares four international bridges and one railbridge with Ciudad Juarez, Mexico. In 2009, El Paso was home to number 52, number 98, and number 100 of the 100 most congested roads in Texas, which are, respectively, North Zaragoza Road between Sun Fire Boulevard and Interstate 10, Lee Trevino Drive between Montana Avenue and Interstate 10, and Interstate 10 between Patriot Freeway and Loop 300. In 2009, 79.8% of El Paso city commuters drive to work alone. 
the 2009 mode share for El Paso city commuters are 10.3% for carpooling, 2.4% for transit, 2.5% for walking, and 0.2% for cycling. In 2016, Walk Score ranked El Paso as the 32nd most walkable of the 50 largest U.S. cities, rating it car dependent. The city of El Paso has a slightly lower than average percentage of households without a car. In 2015, 7.4% of El Paso households lacked a car, and increased to 8.4% in 2016. The national average was 8.7% in 2016. El Paso averaged 1.82 cars per household in 2016, compared to a national average of 1.8. Topic: Airports. El Paso International Airport, a public airport 4 miles (6 kilometers) northeast of downtown El Paso. It is the largest commercial airport in West Texas, handling 2,929,362 passengers in 2017. The El Paso International Airport serves the El Paso Las Cruces Combined Statistical Area. Biggs Army Airfield, Horizon Airport, Dona Ana Airport, Las Cruces International Airport. Topic: Passenger Rail. Amtrak, the national passenger rail system, serves El Paso at the Union Depot, operating its Sunset Limited, Texas Eagle three times weekly between Los Angeles and New Orleans via San Antonio and Houston and between Los Angeles and Chicago via San Antonio and Fort Worth. Major highways Interstate 10, the primary thoroughfare through the city, connecting the city with other major U.S. cities such as Los Angeles, Phoenix, Tucson, San Antonio, Houston, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Gulfport and Mobile, with the East End located in Jacksonville, Florida. I-10 is also a connector to Interstate 25, which connects with the cities of Albuquerque, Santa Fe, Colorado Springs, Denver, Fort Collins, Cheyenne, Casper, and north to the junction with I-90, located in Buffalo, Wyoming. U.S. Highway 54, officially called the Patriot Freeway, it is also known as the North-South Freeway. A business route runs along Dyer Street, the former U.S. 54, from the freeway near Fort Bliss to the Texas-New Mexico border, where it again rejoins the expressway. The original US 54 was a transcontinental route connecting El Paso with Chicago. US Highway 62, Santa Fe Street south of Paisano Drive concurrently runs with US 85, Paisano Drive east of Santa Fe Street to Montana Avenue, then Montana Avenue concurrently with US 180. U.S. Highway 85, Santa Fe Street south of Paisano Drive concurrently runs with U.S. 62 and Paisano Drive west of Santa Fe Street to I-10. U.S. Highway 180, Montana Avenue is a bypass route to the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex to the east, and Flagstaff, Arizona to the west. 
Shish 20, Alameda Avenue, formerly US 80, Texas Avenue, Mesa Street and Donovan Drive. Shish 178, Artcraft Road in northwest El Paso extends from Interstate 10 west to the New Mexico state line, at which point it becomes New Mexico Highway 136, the Pete V. Domenici International Highway. Loop 375, Texas Highway Loop 375 encircles the city of El Paso. Between Interstate 10 and Fort Bliss, including the stretch that crosses the Franklin Mountains via Smugglers Pass, it is Transmountain Road. In the Fort Bliss Military Reservation between Northeast and East El Paso, it is officially the Purple Heart Memorial Highway. In East El Paso, the north and south bound sections are known as Joe Battle Boulevard, or simply as the Loop. South of I-10, in the east and westbound portion, it is known as the Cesar Chavez Border Highway, a four-lane expressway which is located along the Mexico-U.S. border between downtown El Paso and the Isleta area. Spur 601, once known as the Inner Loop, it was officially named the Liberty Expressway by the El Paso City Council in April 2010 at the request of then Fort Bliss Commander Maj. General Howard Bromberg. It was fully completed on April 27, 2011. It connects the Patriot Freeway, US 54, and Biggs Army Airfield to the Purple Heart Memorial Highway, Loop 375. North Loop Road, as well as Delta Drive between North Loop Road and Alameda Avenue, Texas Highway 20. Zaragoza Road, running more or less north from the Isleta International Bridge to US 62-180, Montana Avenue, it lies mostly in East El Paso. Texas Farm to Market Road 3255 runs north from US 54 to the New Mexico state line in northeast El Paso and bears the city street name Martin Luther King Boulevard. Border West Expressway under construction as of 2018, parallel to I-10 through downtown and the west side. Topic. Mass transit The Sun Metro mass transit system operates a system of medium to large capacity natural gas powered buses all around the city of El Paso. El Paso County Transit makes trips with small capacity buses mainly in the eastern El Paso area. On September 1, 2009, NMDOT Park and Ride began operating commuter bus service to and from Las Cruces, New Mexico. Historically, El Paso and Ciudad Juarez had a shared streetcar system with a peak electrified route mileage of 64 miles (103 kilometers) in 1920. The first electrified line across the Rio Grande, which opened on January 11, 1902, was preceded by a network that relied on animal labor. The system quickly spread into residential and industrial areas of El Paso. In 1913, a 12-mile interurban line was built to Isleta. At the close of 1943, the holding company El Paso Electric sold its subsidiary, the El Paso Electric Railway Company and its Mexican counterpart, to one of National City Line's subsidiaries. This resulted in the formation of El Paso City Lines, whose domestic streetcar lines were replaced by buses in 1947. 
The International Streetcar Line which crossed the border via the Stanton Street Bridge continued to operate until 1973. In 1977, El Paso City Lines and two other bus companies were bought by the municipality and merged to form Sun City Area Transit SCAT. In 1987, SCAT restyled itself Sun Metro, El Paso Streetcar as a $90 million Sun Metro project to restore and run the original rolling stock on a 4.8 miles route from downtown El Paso to University of Texas at El Paso. In 2011, Sun Metro was named the most outstanding public transit system of the year in all of North America for a midsize transit system by the American Public Transportation Association. International border crossings The first bridge to cross the Rio Grande at El Paso del Norte was built in the time of Nueva España, over 250 years ago, from wood hauled in from Santa Fe. Today, this bridge is honored by the modern Santa Fe Street Bridge, and Santa Fe Street in downtown El Paso. Several bridges serve the El Paso Ciudad Juarez area. Bridge of the Americas, also known as the Cordova Bridge. Good Neighbor International Bridge, also known as the Stanton Street Bridge Paso del Norte International Bridge, also known as the Santa Fe Street Bridge. Isleta Zaragoza International Bridge, also known as the Zaragoza Bridge. Topic: Notable people. Topic: See also. List of museums in West Texas. National Register of Historic Places listings in El Paso County, Texas. Topic Notes Topic Footnotes Equals 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 source notes <laughs>